heart music, soul in clear singing of song beginning, as in the dawn of time when the stars sang, song of instruments and voices trained in love singing, in which God was praised and love's states described and Baba's life story set forth, love singing of love and listened to by love. The song of his silence spoken by his faithful interpreter as discourses, reminiscences, storytelling, and encouragements. Explain to them love and the ways of love. Took them for walks round Meherabad and Meherazad, showing them particular spots of seclusion and where he had worked with his beloved musts. Through Arangaon with the village band leading the way, where people worshipped him explained love and love's ways to them, washed the feet of a thousand poor, bowing his head to their feet, being the poorest, and gave each money, explained love's ways, being himself love, explained the way of love from beginning to end. There is nothing but God. From eternity to eternity, we are all one an eternal, indivisible ocean of oneness. But we do not know this, being drops of I am myself in the spray of a wave caused by his whim for knowledge of himself. But when our precious human consciousness focus now falsely on our own bubble of a body, realizes who we are, we will know that we, each one of us, is the whole ocean. In a room, one is conscious of its dimensions and of the objects and other people in it. If one goes outside, consciousness can take in the surrounding countryside and sky. If one climbs a hill, a vast panorama can come within the range of consciousness, which remains the same consciousness as the person is still the same person. But its scope and nature has changed. So when our consciousness bursts, its bubble body identification, it becomes conscious of itself as ocean. We breathe, and the moment we stop breathing, we are said to be dead. Our life hangs on the thread of our breath, and yet at every moment we forget it. Yet it goes on, and all night when we sleep, stitching and holding the parts and functions of the body intact. Only when out of breath, or ill do we remember it? And only when we are drowning or suffocating do we unmistakably know that no breath means no life, that breath and life are one and the same thing. We live, yet scarcely conscious that our life is breath, and infinitely more precious than breath is love for God. By breath, we remain alive in what is called life. But love for God is the means by which we realize that our very being is God. Our breath and our life are nothing but a manifestation and illusion of our eternal existence. Not until we are being deprived of breath do we value life. Not until we are being strangled by love do we know we cannot live without God. Our own infinitude leaves no room for anything to exist outside of us. This earth and the innumerable universes are but empty bubbles within the divine ocean of our being, dependent upon our consciousness. We are filled with wonder at the earth, sky, light, sound. They are not there when we sleep soundly. From our waking, we pass through dream to sleep, and from sleep through dreams to waking. In sound sleep, nothing of our wonder, nor fears, nor hopes were there. In sound sleep, we pass into our original divine unity, but do not know it. We wake and are conscious only of the illusion of our creation, the shadow of the oneness of our real existence. To remain awake in sleep is to realize ourselves as God, 
and to experience infinite power, immeasurable knowledge, and unfathomable bliss. By us, it is impossible to obtain this experience. By having the courage to become annihilated of ourselves, by the living Master's grace, we attain it. We are caught within the bindings of the tangled skein of wants. Whether we want food or want God, one God with all comforts or all comforts without God, I is there wanting. Before the beginning of all beginnings, there was no I. Only God was, unconscious of himself. Then arose the whim, who am I? Thus the most original want came into being, and that want let loose on the ocean of his being a storm of drops. Each drop, although of the indivisible ocean, was now a separate eye, and forgot its want of self-knowledge, and only remembered, I want, through the mineral, vegetable, and animal kingdoms, the wants multiplied, and the eye of the drops magnified, until, after countless cycles of time, the original want, I want to know myself, is remembered by us. This one can only be satisfied by our I diminishing and ultimately disappearing into our infinite self. But now, as soon as the path to self-knowledge has begun, the I runs the risk of being magnified all the more. I am advancing. I, I am enlightened, it says. Therefore, one must be ever watchful until the I and all its bindings actually begin to be burned in the fire of divine love. And ultimately, by the grace of the Master, the bindings are all destroyed and the I answers once and for all its question, Who am I? With, I am God. I have explained to you why and how you are God. But remember that so long as you do not become this truth, you will be posing and pretending if you say you are God. Posing and pretending is the only sin God never forgives. If you know yourself to be an ordinary man, do not pretend to be a saint and become a Satan. If you know you are a scoundrel, you need not think you are not worthy to love and be loved by God, the ocean of forgiveness. Although from the point of view of drop as ocean, there is no past and future, only the ever-present from the drop as drop viewpoint, it requires millions and millions of years to know your own eternity. You understand all this, but when you arrive at conviction, if a dog bit you, you would not for a moment forget that the dog and you are one. This condition of consciousness would be the beginning of knowledge, the end of which is the divine authority to assert, I am God. It is no joke to love God. He is so infinitely beautiful, so infinitely precious and so infinitely infinite that even if you had an infinite number of lives and cut each life into an infinite number of pieces by way of an offering to him of your love, it would not necessarily be enough for you to become one with this beloved who is the sum and beyond of all beloveds. Age after age I come down to give you my love and to receive your love. Love me. But never let your love escape in words through your lips to others. To speak of your love is a boasting and an insult to love. Even a saint can fall through such expressions of egotism. Love is a flame. And to speak of love is to choke that flame with smoke. Real love is a clear flame which burns up everything, leaving only God. Love me. And when you go from here, take me with you. 
Thus Baba explained to them through his love, through the words of his faithful interpreter, the ways and the way of love. Love, ever lovely and glorious and bright, the one being, God, their own self, who appears as many but in reality is one, and encourage them to awake from their sleep in dreams and their sleep in God and their dreaming in wakefulness and know themselves as God. And their doubts were dispersed as mist before the sun, and they were lifted up to gaze at him in amazement. Thus, God's descent as a man, and men near to him, the disciples and the plains men, some toiling the terrible smiling passes, some nearly finished their journey, and one by grace his journey done, and the many poor who are always on earth, and the thousand and one guests who stayed with God, and the villagers who live by his name, God, his glory and his gentleness and his brotherhood with men the one being who is beyond comprehension of intellect and heart, but who is infinitely and immeasurably knowable in his avatar, Baba, the same as was called Zarathustra, gleaming bright and pure intelligence, Krishna, glorious player of heart music, Ram as loves bow and streaming arrows, Buddha of immaculate compassion, Isa, perfect and divine swordsman, Mohammed, perfect man living, with men, example, and demonstrator of democracy, the same, the same. The one towards whom Odysseus, the now twice born, set up sail in his ship, well stocked by lovely haired Circe, after she had lovingly tested him and brought him partways on his way to glory. The one, indeed, for whom the whole Achaean host strove in fearful labor to bring back pure and shining moon Helen and so purely win his grace, for whom the whole Achaean host strove in fearful labor out the wine of their blood in offerings, the one indeed for whom all ships ever set out over dark seas and trackless ocean. It is his shoreless ocean of truth they seek for whom all camps and settlement are made and settled and struck and the march resumed, for whom all songs are poured, both in praise of his last brightness and in certainty of his next love bringing, as are the singers sacrificed of themselves for him, like crystal glasses at a banquet, their stems snapped after the royal toasting, the one for whom the reckless of life ones, the masts and saliks, throw away their lives, sunbeat and thirst and mirage sharpness, moon glint and craziness and enwrapment and the hollow night and the dark night of calling. And the calling ceased and the blood turned to milk and tears, tears, tears the path treaders and the goal arrivers in you, Baba, and the Madzubayat, drowned, drowned, utterly drowned in your love. Continuing from Stay With God by Francis Brabazon, Book Two, The Love Song of John Carey, Illusion Singing to Reality. Back in Australia, the most east of the west, John Kerry continued the exile he had begun so and so many millions of lives ago through his own act of waking up and wanting to know exactly who he was. A musical question, which turned out to be a futile proposition of infinite possible development. Sun beat and rain beat, veil upon veil, Day veil of brightness, night veil of dark, face veils and form veils, gossamer spun, crowded close and thickly, sail veils and flag veils, hoisted over veil of sea, veil voyage and returning, 
rain veil of weeping, and a place he hoped where none knew of ships and journeying, and the far shadowing sphere of his glance. Father, thou beloved. Nursing his wound, never healing, but widening, because the spearhead remained in it, widening and love festering, sloughing of veil flesh, widening cleanly, and the spearhead of bliss entering more deeply into the flesh veils, ever more hungrily and healingly, as the sun into the earth when the farmer sets his plow more deeply into the sour subsoil where no sun has been before. Each day of day drag or day flight, curtained within the three curtains of sleep veil and dream veil and awake veil, sleep the forgetter and dream the distortioner and wakefulness, the cruel concretizer who sets the dreams in solid forms, the painter whose brush strokes are the bone and whose color is the teeming flesh squeezed out of tubes of nerve. Nursing the wound, nursing the wound, gazing with admiration on the face of the lovely spearman, he was saying to himself, small wonder and great wonder, things are as they are, and this business of everything and nothing, this business of being nothing and somebody, nobody feeling he is something, something, something in your hand, Baba, or else nothing before your feet. Patience, patience, fool, he was telling himself. Yap, yap of nothing about something which turns out to be nothing. Yap now of piddle pool puddling, instead of sitting quiet by the crystal stream gold flecked of his love. To advantage when you sit still. You don't feel the kick in the bone so much, and you give him a chance to do something. Baba, thou beloved. You, Baba. Stop wanting, when you are lying down, to raise yourself onto your knees. And stop wanting to lie down and cover your head with a blanket when you are standing up. Stop wanting a job, a job with dry land and with lovely rivers. Leave it to him. He knows the time of sea time and growth time and fruit time, both in space time and continent time. Baba. Thou son of the gold of the spear and its widening and healing. Turn in yourself, John. Bring back your eyes, fond man, from restless visioning. What is it to you that an eye is furtive, a lip derisive? That speech is ruined and no eyes lightning indicts the pages of books in lovely verse? Become in your seeing blind, in your hearing deaf, or ever the lovely tide of spring will find you lip clinging to a clod of earth in your eyes stretched in an empty sky. Only a deep cloud of a man can rain rains over parched earth. My gods are diminishing, since you are a jealous god, one lovely in vanity of a lone selfness. Let the mill of you Grind this to flower for the hungry of you. Or let their hunger grow into a crop of hunger, so that they will the more seek you and cast this as dust to the wind. Or, when the grinding is done, either to flower or dust, give me a word, a lovely singing word in my mouth, some honey word, some wine word, to utter in singing, not for many, but for thou in my ear to delight in, so that my ear may aid mine eyes to fix themselves only on your dear form, a singingness of a word, a lo the lovely word of your name, thou beloved one, you. Become unstuck, God, in your entrancement in this which is called me, so that your own love for yourself may be released in a clear stream. Why do you allow yourself to fall into error, attaching yourself to everything you see through these eyes? You are the ever-free, blissful one. I am the veil between yourself and you. Tear this veil, which is between us, but if you cannot, 
ask Baba to do it for you. Oh, the nothingness of the nothing, which is the things of thingness contained in the everything. Nothing am I, and everything art thou, my beloved, lovely, and loveliness itself. Oh, what a box of tricks you are, Krishna Baba. Oh, but you are the compassionate one himself, Buddha Baba, the most shepherd of the flocks of the world, Jesus Baba, the long shadowing spear and singing bow one, Rama Achilles Baba. But I would like to be the most least of a nothing of your servant and dither about cleaning shoes and carrying water in the ambrosial dawn hours. By God, I would, Baba. It gets a bit irksome, waiting for your word, for you to say something. And this blasted murk of a black pitch of a night, which is not a dark night, but just, as said, a black bitch of a night. Oh, the nothingness of the nothing, which is the things of thingness in everything. Nothing am I, but everything art thou, my beloved, lovely and loveliness itself. You, Lord and dear child of yourself, Zeus Bambino Baba. But a little love, a little love injected into us could not altogether be frowned upon as miracle-making although it would be a miracle if the injection took. But it is no good talking to you, Baba. You are just too much love. Whatever we say, we just smile with your smile of divine kindness as much as to say, Oh, these children of mine, myself, why did I ever wake up and start singing? This singing of your smile, stretching out and supporting the nothingness of us of the nothing. Oh, the dawn song of his mouth. I only hope I am still around then. It's no good talking to one who is the saying of the say which one says. Because he doesn't listen, because he knows exactly what he is going to say. Tired, and tired am I of myself. For the wide expanse of the sky, of your bosom I cry. Awaken my heart that I may love you with service, or else be dust before your feet. Anything but this not even nothing, nor a place in your everything. Something, O oh my child and my father, The stars weep, and you have compassion on them in their due to the grass and the wheat field. The sun sinks in his shame, and you cover him with hiding night. But my tears laugh at me, and my shame is naked before me. The prayers of the ant and the flame-loving moth are you answering, and the heavy earth turning are you guiding with infinite care. The song in your praise or a mute adoration, is not much of an asking. And there will come the time of your lovely speaking, and your leaving, and my going, and returning, and waiting, and emptiness, and unlovely, earth under my feet, and wide, wide sky, somewhere you will be, And the mother will be answering her child, and the loved one, her lover with moon and star glint of love eyes, Baba, Baba, God, son of earth and rains of all growing. Not only can I not sing of you, my beloved, but I have no place in your work. A lame cur around the streets and back doors of houses Am I who was once a cattle dog whose teeth were respected? Dog I would be, but at your heels, Baba, 
to trot in your dust, and at campfire at night lie a little way off watching your every move. And when you lay down, myself to follow you again in dreams. But I remember your, am I not enough? To Abu Sayyid, both at the time when the people praised him and when they voided their filth on him. I remember your utter kindnesses and the hem of your dress in my hand and your saying, I am always with you and your own always rejection. The well-set mill grinds the wheat small, and you are the king and the king's son on earth who pays for us all. But no, it is not any that reject me. Myself rejects me that I may become acceptable to him. And just as a dog I had to be on my way up to man, so dog I must become on my way back to myself. Baba, thou sower, and reaper and grinder, thou sifter and again ear grower in each speck of flower. Surely you are in your loving kindness tying up my tongue with the same cords you are cutting away from my heart. You are the great undoer, so that what shall be done shall be done. The remover who brings forward, the stupefier who makes intelligent, the wind that levels the young wheat that the stalks may grow strong in the sun, while you, during the days of its growing, attend other elves and whet with your eyes the sight of its reaping. Thou lovely one, thou faithless one of all faith, thou stone cutter and gem cutter, thou potter and breaker of pots, thou upturner and returner, thou upheavaler and leveler, thou bender of what is straight and thou straightener of the bent, thou Baba, thou lovely woman and glory man and child, thou moon knight, thou star knight, thou dawn swept of stars, thou morning of sun, thou alone doer, thou adorable and adored, thou us, thou only alone self. Thus was John Kerry complaining and praising, for complaint is praise, inasmuch as complaint is attachment, and praise is complaint, because praise is separation. And he was recognizing that this was the beginning of those subtractions, the sum total of which would be the subtraction of him from himself. When the five sheaths are subtracted, Atman alone remains. He will hum. He will hum. I am existence, knowledge, bliss. Cease, cease. Swallow thy breath every moment. 